This video is going to help you understand key Tai Chi concepts from the ancient Tai Chi classics. It's going to help you understand the art more profoundly and hopefully help you to improve the quality of your practice. Tai Chi has a series of documents associated with it. These are known as the Tai Chi classics. These essays and poems are the condensed wisdom of generations of martial artists and practitioners of Chinese healing arts. They contain actionable ideas, tips and concepts that are designed to be trained and embodied during practice. There are five major essays which we will be looking at in a straightforward and visual way in this short video series. The history of the documents isn't completely clear as some fragments of the various documents have appeared in different places in China for hundreds of years. The version I will be using is that which appears in the document written by Song Xumin, whose Tai Chi lineage falls outside of the more usual Chen village genealogy. The same copy of the classics was also used by Wu Tunan, student of Wu Qianchuan, in his own book. It is important to understand that these documents form the theoretical and conceptual blueprint that forms the art we now know as Tai Chi Chuan. Whichever style you are practicing, the choreography is far less important than the systematic training and embodiment of these ideas. If you wish to be practicing Tai Chi as originally envisaged by masters of the past, you must study and incorporate the concepts held within these documents. Tai Chi is born of Wu Qi, stillness, and is the mother of Yin and Yang. When there is movement, pass. This opening statement explains the fundamental cosmological concept of Tai Chi. The belief shared by many philosophical schools of ancient China is that before the universe was formed as we now experience it, there was a state of suspended animation known as Wu Qi. This state of complete emptiness, formlessness and stillness is practiced during Tai Chi training through the holding of various stances and postures in complete stillness as shown. Although we can't actually achieve true Wu Qi by this symbolic effort to reproduce it physically, we can quieten down a lot of physical and mental processes which allow conscious awareness to then settle on other, usually lesser considered feelings and physical experiences. This in turn is believed to enhance the quality of our movement practice. When we start to move, we move away from the Wu Qi state and now there is Tai Chi and Yin and Yang can be seen through the entire body. neither going too far nor far enough. Comply and bend, then engage and extend. In Tai Chi training, whether you are practicing solo or with a partner doing drills, you should always be aware of the balancing relationship of yin and yang. In this paragraph, it's referencing your physical movements, which should extend fully though not too far, during attacking movements and defensive actions. We should use our body to its full potential in all movements, not stopping short, reducing effectiveness, or going too far and compromising our balance. We should also merge these movements in concert with those of a partner or opponent, as is required. Sometimes, in a sense, being compliant, and sometimes engaging and extending our attacks, whether striking or grappling, towards the opponent. He is hard while I am soft. This is yielding. My energy is smooth while his energy is coarse. This is sticking. Again, being true to the yin and yang theory, these two sentences encourage the use of softness to defeat hardness which is essentially yin neutralizing yang. 
The highest level of softness is pure evasion, which requires excellent reflexes, footwork and movement, and should be trained in all partner self-defense drills. Diverting attacks away from their original intended target is also an example of softness, and so should also be practiced as much as possible. Sometimes we can't move in time to evade or divert a strike, but we can go with the direction of the blow which takes the sting out of it. This is the lowest level of softness, but should also be trained in Tai Chi pushing hands drills such as reeling silk. If he moves fast, I quickly respond. This is connecting. If his movement is slow, I leisurely follow. This is following. This sentence is talking about developing expert timing. Being fast is great, but not, not if it's being used inappropriately, because it doesn't harmonize with what's actually happening externally. In training, you should seek to match your speed with the opponent's speed, which leads to a better use of timing. Although there is an endless variety of possible scenarios, there is only the single principle throughout. This sentence is reinforcing that the above concepts are the key fundamental ideas that you should initially pay attention to in your training. That of yin and yang awareness and its appropriate application in training and in defensive situations. Many people get overly concerned with the technical issues in martial arts. The essence of true Tai Chi practice is to move your mind and physical practice beyond these concerns and to start to realize and understand more fundamental truths, which will then be seen everywhere. As the great swordsman Musashi said, once you see the truth clearly in one thing, you will see it in all things. He subsequently went on to become not only Japan's greatest ever swordsman, but also one of their most revered artists, proving his point very well. Once you have ingrained these techniques, you will gradually come to identify energies, and then from there you will gradually progress towards something miraculous. But unless you practice a lot over a long time, you will never have a breakthrough. The first sentence is emphasizing the process of growth, whereby we start to become thoroughly aware of the various types of power we can produce using our own bodies, through to being able to precisely perceive threats and opportunities present at all moments when face to face with an opponent, through understanding their energies and how to best nullify and then exploit them. The second sentence is a really key sentence for many people in the modern tech-focused world in which we live, where there is often high demand and expectation of instant gratification and the idea and concept of hacking skills and abilities. The old timers in the martial arts knew that real ability takes a lot of work, effort and consistent practice over a long period of time to not only gain the physical conditioning and programming of the nervous system so that can effectively carry out the, the desired responses and movements, but also to achieve higher levels of understanding and the kind of training wisdom that results from a lot of inquiry, a lot of training, and a lot of reflection. Press up your head top. This important requirement in Tai Chi is repeated in almost all of the classics, often along with the idea of being suspended from above by a piece of string attached to the top of your head. This elongates the spine, allowing it to form a neutral and natural alignment, which may assist in a more harmonious functioning of the nervous system, which will result in a cascade of benefits. There is a large body of research which points to this type of posture and stature as benefiting mood, thinking, and hormonal function. 
it's in a sense a very non-passive, non-submissive posture. Not aggressive, but simply not passive. Which nature somehow rewards with better physiological and psychological functioning. It's beneficial to make efforts to carry over these postural benefits that you gain from practicing Tai Chi into daily life. Sometimes this crossover is automatic, but some conscious awareness can sometimes help. There's research that actually shows that simply holding a posture like this, uh, non-aggressive but non-submissive, uh, head extended upwards type of posture, actually improves uh, the way that people respond to you in the wor real world and how you end up becoming treated in the real world. There's also interesting research done with violent offenders when shown videos of uh, various people and they discuss which of those people they will choose to attack in predatory attacks. It's always people with slumped postures um, and head facing downwards. Energy sinks to your elixir field. This sentence is actually written, Qi sinks to the Dan Qian, which is simply breathing advice. There are three Dan Tians which are usually spoken of, the lower one being slightly below the navel. It's associated with many different things in different schools of thought, Qigong and martial arts, but often simply refers to the functioning of the internal organs, particularly the kidneys which is seen as a storehouse of vitality and creative potential known in Taoist, Qigong and martial arts circles as Jing. The advice of this sentence is to simply develop breathing patterns that encourage the diaphragm to sink downwards upon inspiration, which in turn massages and thereby improves the health and functioning of the various internal organs as well as strengthening the activity of the parasympathetic nervous system. Increased activity of the parasympathetic nervous system leads to greater levels of relaxation and also feelings of well-being. It's the antithesis of the stress state. This has numerous advantages for most people in the modern world who are often in chronic stress states and experience uh, continual feelings of low-grade anxiety. The slower aspects of Tai Chi, when combined with nasal breathing, naturally develop this type of breathing pattern. In addition, several of the Tai Chi internal strength or Nei Gong exercises are specific. Stand centered and not leaning. This is another simple postural guideline. Achieving and maintaining perfect balance wherever possible during both training and combat is important because it's required for you to be able to move in an agile way in any direction, as well as to be able to effectively use offensive and defensive techniques. Many people over lean, which compromises balance. Suddenly hide and suddenly appear. This short line is advising you to be very sneaky in combat and to hide your techniques and true intentions through both posture and the use of feints. This again needs to be trained continually in practice so that it's a natural habit for you. When there is pressure on the left, the left must become empty. When there's pressure on the right, the right must become empty. This line re-emphasizes the yin-yang paradigm and the use of softness to overcome an opponent's force that is felt on either side of the body. <laughs> Emptiness and fullness manifest simultaneously. There is always yin and yang once we are in movement we can also train ourselves to employ this idea in combat, being both simultaneously yin and yang, defending and attacking in one movement. 
when looking up, it is still higher. This concept alludes to the idea of taking an attack given to you by the opponent further along in the direction of travel. In this example, my partner Sammy, he's kicking me with a push kick, which travels upwards from the ground towards the target of my body. So it has elevation. I simply evade the attack and take it in its intended direction slightly further higher. When advancing, it is even further. When retreating, it is even nearer. When an opponent is covering distance towards us, our footwork and distance control should be so good we can cause them to feel that we are always out of reach. But when we move towards them, we can cover the distance frighteningly well. So the more they retreat, the nearer we feel. A feather cannot be added, a fly cannot land. At close quarters, we need to train our tactile sensitivity to be so alert and responsive that the slightest touch from the opponent is reacted to and neutralized with ease. The opponent does not understand me, only I understand him. A hero is one who encounters no opposition, and it is through this kind of method that such a condition is achieved. This statement emphasizes the need for craftily hiding our strengths and weaknesses as well as our true intentions during combat. Otherwise, we can easily be countered, neutralized, and possibly even completely defeated. Stand like a scale. Move like a wheel. These two points further emphasize the need to maintain perfect balance and stability through all Tai Chi training both solo and partnered, and then in actual fighting, wherever possible. The advice to move like a wheel means when using footwork to move in the various directions, our center of gravity should maintain its height and evenness. Again, this helps us to maintain a perfect stability and posture for attacking and defending. It's a very simple but highly effective teaching cue. If you drop one side, you can move. If you have equal pressure on both sides, you will be stuck. We often see one who has practiced hard for many years, yet is unable to perform any neutralizations and is always under the opponent's control. And the issue here is that this error of double pressure has not yet been understood. If you want to avoid this error, you must understand passive and active. Here, we are being further made aware that we always need to be seamlessly moving from yin to yang in both our movements and our intentions. If we stay static and have an absence of yin and yang, it's impossible to adjust fluidly to the needs of an exchange. The footwork is the first place to look for the defects in regards to this. As you can see in the footage, the uh, changes of yin and yang are essential to follow the flow of the opponent. In yielding, there is sticking, and in sticking, there is yielding. This point is telling us that when we make contact with the opponent, we shouldn't oppose them, so we're sticking, yet at the same time yielding somewhat. 
Likewise, when we're giving way to the opponent in the various ways that are possible, we should maintain some physical contact at all times so we can feel for their intent, strengths and weaknesses. The active does not depart from the passive, and the passive does not depart from the active, for the passive and active exchange roles. Once you have this understanding, you'll be identifying energies. Here, we are learning about a highly sensitive mental and physical state, where we maintain softness and flexibility in mind and body whilst we are attacking, as well as maintaining a degree of structure in defensive moments, as well as the intent to launch an immediate counter-strike or counter-offensive grappling technique. This sensitivity should be to both your own posture and movements as well as those of your opponent. So you are fully aware of the overall yin and yang dynamics within the situation. Hence, the energies are identified. Once you are identifying energies, then the more you practice, the more efficient your skill will be. And by absorbing through experience and by constantly contemplating, gradually you will reach the point that you can do whatever you want. Here again, we are being reminded that training is a process and that we need to think and ponder about the theory and our experiences during training and to regularly practice until we reach some form of mastery which at that point probably opens up further possibilities to be explored. It really is an unending process. But training and thought combined with understanding the theory all need to be implemented into the training process. The basic of basics is to forget about your plans and simply respond to the opponent. We often make the mistake of ignoring what is right in front of us in favor of something that has nothing to do with our immediate circumstances. For such situations, it is said, miss by an inch, lose by a This final piece of advice is almost the essence of the martial training process. And in Tai Chi, we're trying to find a state of skill and also a mindset where we're completely spontaneous and we respond exactly to the needs of the situation at hand, not being impeded by uh, our ego or what we'd like to happen, but w what is actually happening. The other point made is that we often try to do things that are more complicated and difficult and flashy perhaps, whereas the better solution might be far more simple Simplicity is a key point in the practice of Tai Chi. So keeping it very direct, doing things that are the easy, simple, and most effective uh, solution to the problem right at that moment. These Tai Chi classics are an absolutely amazing source of general martial arts training, information, wisdom, and guidance. But for a Tai Chi practitioner in particular, it's the DNA of your art, so you should really explore and investigate the ideas held within them. And what you will actually find is that over the, uh, the time that you train, your understanding and interpretation of some of these ideas can change and develop over time. So um, that's one of the beautiful things. So definitely you ought to get yourselves a, a good copy or try several copies because translators often translate them quite differently. So get different copies and uh, study and try to use the ideas and concepts in your training and you will find that your skill level and ability will go up exponentially. Uh, I'm going to make more, four more of these videos um, in due course, but uh, it's definitely helpful if you've enjoyed this content, if you can like the video, uh, perhaps uh, subscribe, even click the, the little notification bell and um, that's of uh, great assistance for us here. Thank you. Additionally, if you're interested in learning Tai Chi, either in person or online, uh, via Zoom sessions and online courses, we have a variety of courses, particularly on Tai Chi internal strength, 
as well as the self-defense aspects. So head over to www.neilrosiak.com and you can find all those uh, learning resources there.